Greetings, Klausowitz here. So this is uh, the next part of my Hoplite video series and I'm now looking into this um, pushing match idea and um, what uh, is there some sense to it and how I think um, this would work out with, for Hoplites or how they fought and yeah. First of all, this pushing match thesis is basically the opinion that um, Hoplites just push um, through enemies. They use their big shields, they use this convex form, they use the depth of um, their own formation and would push through enemy formations to break them. So basically in every situation, like if they would fought against other hoplites or if they would fought against lighter troops or other armies like Persians when they invaded Greece. And um, yeah, the other side basically is uh, to say that this is rubbish and they didn't push at all because if they would push, like people would in the front rows immediately die and um, that they just fought each other on max range, sometimes I hear that, but uh, basically just fought each other and there was no pushing at all. So, but um, I have to say about this, um, I don't think that one of it is either right in this way, but I say it's kind of some things of both opinions are right and this would form um, the most likely um, behavior of hoplites. Because um, if we now look at hoplites and their equipment and whatsoever what I described in the third part, and if really two hoplite formations would engage, basically this whole idea that through this pushing, if everybody would, would push forward, that uh, basically the first draws would die or would, would choke or something like that, what sometimes happened when like uh, crowds of people smash one or two people against um, a wall or whatever and uh, that this would be the same as well. here is where I hardly disagree because um, if it would be so easy if just people would uh, clash in each other that they instantly instantly die or that they would choke now can't get enough air we would see this dozens of times we would see it all the time in rugby and football and American football matches where they basically threw on each other and stuff like that and they actually the worst thing that I ex ex experienced is like bone break, uh, breaking bones and um, concussions but this is you're not the subject what could happen to sure, su um, such an um, such a uh, things can happen on a hoplite battle too but this is here not the point the point is and Another point, also, the point is that the people wouldn't die, the hoplites wouldn't die instantly of these reasons and uh, one of the reasons for that is basically you can't actually charge so well with hoplites because if you would charge, uh, you have to imagine, you have uh, hundreds of people, you would form this formation, this deep formation, it had to be tight and it's, it had to be um, interlocked shields in the front or even in the, in the walls behind that um, now everybody has to kind of run as fast as they can or we have to really f run fast but also hold the formation and this is something that can't really work and it could work with extremely well trained and disciplined troops but actually you don't have the time for this because you actually don't have really this good and uh, experienced veterans um, all the time and um, on the other hand they even don't get all the time trained because it's like I mentioned in my first part it's more like this duty you have to commit when it's needed and um, this is what I want to say. Uh, they didn't have actually so much speed on the on the clash, or maybe they didn't even clash at all in this this charging manner, more approaching each other carefully and start stabbing, because they would knew their weapons. And this is the next point and the most important point. They had weapons. They had spears. They had swords through their tight formation and through some uh, usage or some specific types of use of the spear in either way or basically the back rows or the rows behind you if you would be in the front could stab out the enemy too and this is also uh, true for the other troops so if they would attack each other when really one side would start pushing 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 they really get uh, stabbed and hacked down basically because now they can't fought back now they aren't a real threat for them if an enemy would kind of push against the push I would start stabbing him if he would kind of try to defend himself so basically engage me and try to attack then he can't actually push anymore the back rows the back ranks could kind of push and push and push they did this to an extent but they couldn't kind of recklessly push all through because this is what destroys your own formation and this is the next thing the goal of an hoplite fight, and even if you were a hoplite, the goal where 
to destroy the enemy's formation. I mentioned and described this in the third part that you need to really to defeat the formation itself so they, 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 uh, so that they have to uh, retreat, to withdraw from the battlefield and basically get, let the other wing exposed. And so this wing has to withdraw too. And this is the whole thing about it. And so basically uh, what you want to achieve is you want to weaken the enemy formation through killing some people to maybe get them like carefully back off. They want not want to die. They try to come behind the shield and everything. And that basically um, there is there are weaknesses in the formation. That maybe the shield interlocking failed because people backing off or people dying and stuff like that. And now you want to push through these weaken weaknesses to kind of destroy the formation or to push the formation behind. That the formation kind of have to regroup a little bit. But then you come again and come again and kind of pushing um, against them. It is true that they pushed, but this is true for every melee based formation fighting basically. You need to break through the enemy formation and this is literally, <laughs> you re really um, want to break through it and this you can achieve if you apply force from your own formation to the other. And this is what happened uh, in some occasions like uh, against the phalanx um, when the Romans fought against the Macedonians um, decided the control about Greece and actually the formation, the failure formation didn't fail because of the road but it failed because of the terrain. They pushed the enemy too and this is it again, this pushing, they pushed the enemy back. The enemy would, uh, the Romans knew if I would stand, I would withstand, I could die or I will die because I can't do anything against it so they back up, as they retreat, I mean. And um, this is this is essentially the point. The fighting, the moral factor, are decisive for this whole thing. And by the way, if this whole pushing match would be true, then basically um, the deepest formation would win. But we have examples where this didn't happen, where actually formations with lesser ranks succeeded. And one of the reasons is where the, that um, one of the reasons was that. Um, like I described, the, the veterans or the good hoplites fought against the not so good hoplites or the lighter troops. And so basically they kind of tried to push through. This is because they couldn't resist so much and they didn't were so brave, they didn't were so experienced. So basically um, it was a bad idea to kind of just, oh, I would stand here and fight to the death. And <laughs> so basically they backed off if they wouldn't see a good chance of winning, of fighting successfully, of defending themselves. And uh, they hadn't even the equipment for this. Maybe some of them, because it was my light hoplites, didn't have the right shields, or they didn't have maybe a helm either. Uh, neither. And this would be very um, disadvantageous to just uh, have the shield and the spear. And then the enemy, the enemy veteran hoplites, with their uh, big helmets and with some of the fancy stuff on it, and with their um, uh, with their breastplates or uh, with their linothorax and shield and spear and, and ready and information and discipline coming at you. And this is the reason why making the veteran front deeper was a good idea because they could push through easily to this light formation because they couldn't withstand. And another example, if you would um, like put two guys of get four guys and put two next to each other and two behind of them and then take like 20 guys, <laughs> make them uh, behind each other and then try to push through them and look who can withstand them. And this is what, I'm, what I meant. You really can push through people, through formation. This is also something what uh, they did, uh, what they do in rugby. They kind of formed up and pushed through enemy defense. It's very similar to formation fighting actually. And um, yeah, this is actually all what I can say about this, so basically this pushing match thesis is in all in this just pushing makes no sense, but actually they were pushing and uh, not just fighting, pushing is necessary and uh, yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed and if you have something to say let me know and yeah, see you in the next part.